And uh, Ben or Philip, do you want to read the uh, script and give me a start time for the meeting? Do either of you need me to pull up the agenda? Yep. <laughs> you know what? That statement's not on that agenda. That's what I was just looking for in the packet. I can pull one up from another agenda. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I had to step away for a bit. I'm single parenting this week, so my son needed me. What are, where are we at? Uh, we're just about to call the meeting to order. Got it. Ben, are you doing that? I can, I can. Oh, there we go. There's the statement. Now I guess I can. I read this. All right. So we start with the statement, right? I always forget well, this part. You can just say that the, you're going to start the meeting, but I just need a time. Yeah. All right. So seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm calling the Amherst Human Rights Commission to order at 6.36 on... Wednesday, November 16th, and pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Where members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Great. Thank you. Now I'm going to pull up the uh, regular agenda and then you can, or today's agenda. Yeah. Jen, before you do that, can we um, just take a moment to acknowledge the new members? So I heard, I think I heard you say in the background that they, today's the end day before they can be sworn in or what is yep. 30th day? Yep. Um, it's actually the first part on the agenda is, is welcome. It is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you see it? Perfect. Yes. Okay, perfect. So we can go run. I'll stop share for now so everybody can see each other. Yes. And Hello, I'll welcome. Thank you for coming and joining today. And uh, yes, as Jen said, when you receive the packet, if you could just go to town clerk's office and get sworn in. Um, I I think it's worth going around for some quick introductions. Um, I was on your interviewing committee. So my name is Phil Favula. I'm one of the co-chairs of the Human Rights Commission. I will pass it to Ben. Hey, how's it going? I'm Ben Harrington. I'm the other co-chair. I also got to meet you. I actually had a face the last time we spoke, but today I'm, I'm doing double duty, but yeah. so. I just want to welcome you again and look forward to working with you. And I will pass it to Victor because he's in the top right on mine. Hi, my name is Victor. Um, I recently joined the HRC at the beginning of this, uh, the beginning of this school year. So uh, September around that time. Um, I'll pass it to Juliana. My name is Juliana. I've been on the HRC for the same amount of time as Victor, and I will pass it to Miss Young. Hi, I'm Pamela Young. I was part of your interview committee, so um, we had a chance to meet, and I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and I will pass it to the Assistant Director, Jen. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jennifer Moist, and I'm the Assistant Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And Pamela and I are your staff liaisons. So um, we kind of help run meetings and answer questions about the town and things like that. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Liz. 
Good evening. I am Liz Haygood. Um, Laverne knows me from a long, long time ago as Mrs. Skelton. Um, she went to school where I taught and um, also was a member of our church, Goodwin Memorial. Um, I've been on the commission for my, this is my third year, and I help with a lot of um, subcommittee work. And I don't, I, th I think I saw Earl in there somewhere. Yes. I'm, I'm here, Liz. It's, it's too long since I've seen you, so I'm glad to see you tonight. Uh, I'm Earl Miller. I'm the director of the Community Responders for Equity, Safety, and Service Department in town, and excited to be here with you all tonight. I have no sense of who's left. Uh, whoever hasn't gone should go. Oh, I think our two new members haven't gone. Right. So either Laverne or Tyler. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm Laverne Kelly. Uh, nice to meet everyone. I'm uh, Tyler. Uh, I'm a student at Amherst College. I'm really excited to be on the committee. Welcome, welcome. Awesome. Go ahead, Ben. Oh, okay. So, um. Do we have to do the agenda review part? I noticed that's always on our agendas and I feel like we never actually do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think we have to. I think the agenda is up. So yep. unless anybody has objection to it, I guess, but I think that's good. Then um, uh, it looks like uh, next on the agenda then, pop no, I was just gonna say, do we have anyone for a public comment? We don't actually have any. We do have two attendees. Oh, yep, it's possible. So. so now would be a good time to- So we can open up to public comment right now. Yeah. Members in the public, if you have a public comment, if you would like to speak, please raise your hand. Don't think I'm seeing any going once, going twice. Oh, nope. All right, then we are going to move on. We have uh, next on the agenda is HRC member reports. Uh, does anybody have any reporting back out that they would like to do? Hi. Um, I have not been able to be in attendance at the um, Housing Trust Committee meetings. You know, they keep saying second Tuesday, and then I keep missing it. Last Tuesday, last second Tuesday was election day, so they didn't have it, so they had it a different day. So I'm still um, trying to work and get in control of that. Um, I have been, I don't know if this is a report for now or new business, but I'm going to put it out there and tell me if I'm wrong. I have been requested to have uh, folks attend a meeting with the um, town council and um, think about and share their views on um, updating our athletic fields at the high school. Um, I know that there's been some controversy around trying to get the track the in, in the inner field um, up, to, up to par. Right now, the track area is technically condemned. Um, it's not fit for competition or practice, even though people are still on it. It is a safety hazard. I know because I, as a member of the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association's Cross Country and Track and Field Committee, a national track and field member, um, a Hampshire County trainer, and a member of the Western Mass Track and Field Officials Association's Board of Directors, I and my current president are the ones who went around and made the report uh, deeming the track unsafe for use. Um, I also coached there for 25 years from 1982 to 2006. And so it hurt my heart to have to do that. And um, a member of the 
booster committee um, parent group that oversees and raises funds for all of athletics for the high school has asked me to put this on the agenda and speak a little bit about um, having people go to the um, town council meeting on Monday and during their public comment expressed to them the importance of having a safe and healthy track, not only for the high school, but also for community members, um, our um, athletes, our phys ed department, the entire school, and especially our um, learning disabled um, students as they move forward. So if you could put that on the agenda, um, and if you can't attend the meeting, if you could write something for me to share or write something to your town council leader. I think that's it. The other thing is on, um, oh, well, Ben is part of it. So <clears throat> I've also joined the School Equity um, Action Committee. Um, Julian is on there and Ben is our leader for that um, committee. I think we're supposed to be meeting right now, but I'm here. I saw Ben was here too, and Julian is here, so I don't know where that meeting went. But, it's next um, week, next week. Next oh, good. Week. Um, but I um, have been in the school. I went to the POCO meeting yesterday, spoke with the students and had a great time with them. Um, so one of our charges for this year will be to um, make our presence known more in the schools, speak to the staff, speak to the students, find out for what's going on for them find, um, give a pulse for school climate, help with crests when, if there's need, uh, need for some of us to just be an extra body in the school and help out, especially the high school and the middle school. And the other one was Kwanzaa, which we will discuss later. And I, I want to give like a, a, a soft cosign to Liz's comments about the, uh, the track. Full disclosure, like I'm not entirely sure so there's a lot of gray area here for me, right? So I'm the assistant facilities director, so I'm heavily involved, clearly. I'm also the chair of the regional school committee, so I'm also heavily involved. But if you had any questions that might help you make a more informed public comment, you can reach out to myself. And I'm also volunteering Liz, because she has a plethora of knowledge too, so. Do we know when that meeting is gonna be that the town council's gonna? It's, it's Monday. If this Monday's meeting, um, they're supposed to be the track and hopefully some additional funding to help not only the track but the um, fields around the track. Um, we're trying to put turf there. It's very um, and it, it's an interesting place. If you walk from the stairs to the track, you sometimes are knee deep in water before you even get to the track. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, if you need more individual information, I can go over a little more. But yeah. I don't want to take the time here. No, I, th I think that makes sense. Uh, and I definitely will reach out to you for some more information. Jen, you have your hand up. Yep, I was just going to add on to Liz's statement and Ben's now that it's, a, and I think the controversy is less about the track and more about the turf field from what I'm hearing here in town hall. So. Yeah, that's, um, so that's the whole, that's like the main issue, but it also affects fundraising for the track because it does. So, okay, so, so what was approved was that if funds were raised, we, we would go with this option A, there were three options, option A being the synthetic turf field on the inside in the infield, but, but so the, the grass field isn't actually on the agenda. So, so what the, the base, if we don't meet the fundraising goals, right, the, it's the base part of the track is going to get redone and it'll just be grass on the inside. I can give, I can give specs if need be, but yeah, so that, that is like the main part is the, the synthetic versus it's, it's essentially synthetic and completely redoing the track or just resurfacing the track. Like that's kind of what it comes down to. And, uh, and I think that um, people who might not be at the high school or, or don't know enough about this, or who don't have kids playing sports right now, when we go to other sports fields, uh, everybody else has a really nice field. Most of them have turf. And then you come to Amherst and, you know, it's hard to play lacrosse. It's hard to play football. It's hard, you know, when you play lacrosse, you have to get down and scoop the ball, but that's hard to do when the grass is like five inches high. So there's just a lot that goes behind the, the track. Um, and, you know, if you think about the kids 
almost every team that they go to play against in another town has a turf field that is very nice. So. Okay. The other, yeah, the, you know, the other issue is is that um, we got from a cinder track to an all weather track in 2000. Um, the track should be upgraded at least every eight to ten years. So if you think about 2000 to 2022, we're talking about at least two, almost three cycles that have gone by with nothing being done, and it's torn up. Um, and you know. It starts affecting the entire, not only the um, track itself, but the outlying, outlying grassy areas. And uh, according to um, what I know, is that if we don't get, if we can't figure out how to work with um, the infield as well, um, we're affecting soccer and lacrosse and field hockey and football and in um, ultimate and those are the sports. Never mind all the phys ed classes and all the town members that go and use that facility. And um, we have to figure out the drainage system and that's the biggest issue. And that's what we really need to um, focus on so that we can make it safe for everybody's use. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but uh, thank you everybody for that. And if you would like any further information, it sounds like uh, reach out to Ben or Liz about that. and. A town council meeting is November 21st. We'll, we'll, also be arguing to about it at, action. we'll also be arguing about it at the school committee meeting tomorrow night. So if, if you want to hear like the, the robust conversation, and, and, and to be honest with you, you can hear what the controversy is because there'll be people from both sides talking. <laughs> I don't know what you're arguing. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to say. We'll be on little. the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, moving to action and discussion items. Uh, up first, I don't know if Earl, if you're still with us, uh, press update. Sorry about that. I, I've had a long day, so I'm using it anytime yeah, I can. No, that's uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I'm really proud of Crest. Uh, we are the fastest department in the country to deployment um, by a pretty great deal. So if you know the timetable last December, the council made the kind of department official. Uh, I was hired in March. The responders were hired in July. We came out of training. Uh, we were sworn in July 5th. Uh, we came out of training September 6th. Um, and so really you're looking at a two month window for them till deployment. Work is going really well. You know, we're finding that we're able to bring a kind of unique perspective to things. Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to think of some good calls in the last week. Uh, we took someone who was struggling with cooking and, and some fire safety stuff to buy a, a, a different kind of burner to avoid that sort of risk. Um, we were we worked with the Historical Society to support some folks who had been staying there to find a new space to be at. Um, continuing to deliver meals at the Senior Center. Uh, if you've been to kind of any town event in the last three or four months, you've you've seen my folks there, including the South Asian Festival uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we're busy. We're a small department, so I don't want to promise you all the world. We're we're eleven people. Uh, Twelve on the twenty eighth, we'll, we'll bring our our next person on, um, a young woman. I'm really excited for for the town to meet. Um, but twelve people can only do so much. Um, so right now we're nine to five, Monday through Friday, um, and this is really allowing me to train folks and to really put eyes on them as they're doing their work. Uh, July 7th, we will be breaking out into our regular shifts, which means that uh, the town will have seven days a week, um, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. coverage from Crest. Uh, and that really is kind of our next step. We, we know that uh, folks would like us to have kind of later hours. Um, you know, what I would say is there isn't really an on switch in this sort of thing. You, like you can't just kind of turn it on and it's there. Uh, you have to make sure folks are comfortable, that they're doing the job safely, that they feel supported. Um, and we're not really quite there for a third shift yet. We really still need to be able to um, to see each other a great deal. Um, so, you know, we're, we're working with municipalities all around the country, uh, Minneapolis, Albuquerque, Durham, North Carolina, Denver, um, learning from their mistakes and sharing them. And one of the things I'm really proud about is we're actually starting to support other communities who are starting to develop these ideas. We're meeting with a group from Florida in a couple of weeks, a group from Alabama, and really just 
you know, helping them to hopefully avoid some of the mistakes we made uh, and take some of the good ideas. Um, so, you know, I, I, I could rattle on about this forever. I, I do all day. Uh, so I, I think the much more interesting thing is to answer questions if you have them or, or get out of your way if you don't. Thank you being modest, Earl, when you say you work in nine to five, because I've seen you at some of the controversial football games and some of the evening events over at that high school. So stop, don't sell yourself short, bro. I'm, I'm working seven days a week. I'm trying not to work them like that yet. And uh, and hopefully soon I'll be able to take a few more days off. But I, I, I know folks worry about me and I appreciate that about the, this is a dream job. Like I, this is all I want to do. So I don't ever feel burnt out about it. I've been waiting my whole life for this. The other thing is for Tyler and Laverne, we use a lot of acronyms. So if you don't understand what something means, please raise your hand because CRAS and CSKCC and yeah, we use a lot of stuff like that. So if you don't know what those acronyms mean, raise your hand and somebody, Jennifer or Pamela, somebody will tell you. Tyler, would it, be helpful for, for would it be helpful for me to just say what CRAS is? I think maybe every, so uh, CRAS is the third leg of public safety in town. Uh, we're a co-equal branch with the police and fire. Um, we're unarmed first responders who, you know, really have an anti-racist mandate in our charge. Um, and, you know, it's pretty, we're the first department like ours in New England. Um, there's maybe about 20 in the country. So we are on some untread ground. Uh, but, you know, I think Amherst is the right place for it. Um, I think getting super into the weeds in it, it probably would take all night, and I, I I don't think you want that. But um, it's we're very new, so we're we're uh, this is our eleventh week of of being out. So you know we're kind of expanding every day. Uh, today, some of our folks did survival center deliveries. Um, really, we're trying to. Our, my goal in this is for us to be as helpful as we can, as often as we can, and. Um, Unarmed to me doesn't just mean not having weapons. Um, it means that our engagement shouldn't cost folks anything. So we don't do fines, we don't do tickets. We um, we're we are a consensual service. So uh, anybody in town who we show up to talk to, if they don't want us there, uh, we leave. Um, that doesn't happen often, though. I think most folks have been receptive to us. But it's 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 if it's tricky for you to wrap your head around, don't worry. It's tricky for me to wrap my head around, and I live in it. Um, it is a new way of doing things. Would love to any of you all who are interested. We're we're looking at having an open house, but um, anybody who wants to come tour our space, talk to our responders, we have an open door for that. Yeah, Earl, I have a I have a question and a follow up. So so just just to recap this. So it's not costing us any money to have you here tonight, right? Uh, not yet not yet keep talking <laughs> yeah not just joking so no in all, in all seriousness what, what has been like the biggest challenge in getting rolling so far yeah like you're, you're totally the, created a whole new department like that's <laughs> that's got to be tough all the way through I, I think the biggest challenge has been the like limitations of managing people um our responders all took a big risk right they took a job that's not guaranteed to last forever right this idea um skews towards failure more of these departments have failed than succeeded um, so finding people and, and recruiting them and training them, um, it was a big task and it continues to be, um, I would say supervision is tricky. Uh, I'm the only supervisor in the department, which means I supervise 11 people. Um, and so we've broken that up. Now we have some group supervision happening. We had a group supervision today, motivational interviewing next week. We'll have one in uh, vicarious trauma to make sure that they're processing the things they're seeing, um, I don't, I, I would consider them all luxury problems. I don't have anything I can't get through. Not yet, at least. Perfect. Thank you. Tyler, I think you're clear go to go Tyler. if you want to go. Okay. Um, so I'm just a little curious about how the program um, is interfacing with uh, calls. So is it interfaced into like police department business line or even into the emergency uh, dispatch services? Or is it like a separate um, phone number and a separate um, program that people would need to reach out to? That's a great question. So there's two answers to that. I'll give you the right now answer and then the January answer. Uh, right now we aren't plugged into dispatch. Uh, we just, we had to buy a new console for dispatch, a big uh, setup or we have new radios. Um, so we're very much still in the, I would consider until January, a very soft opening. 
Um, the main way people are getting a hold of us is by calling our number, um, which is, is widely available. If you go on the town website, now it's not just my name there. There's other things listed, but our phone number is there. Um, my cell phone number, which is widely available. Um, and and then people just show up to our office. So it is pretty routine at this point that we, uh, it's funny, I was closing up yesterday and there was a UMass student who was just in our conference room studying. Uh, and I hadn't really thought that our space would be used for that, but, you know, uh, great. And so people will come and say, hey, my neighbor had a tough weekend. I'm concerned about them. Can you come and touch base with them? And, and we will. Um, and yeah, so I, I right now we're, we're also uh, working a lot with the senior center. So we're doing their wellness checks. We're getting calls from the survival center, Craig's store, kind of driving it that way. In January, uh, we'll turn on the dispatch system. Um, our folks will get trained all through December on the radios, which is just if you've never carried around a radio all day, it's tricky. It's easy to, to knock the app off or any of those things. So uh, come January, we will be dispatched. You'll be able to call 911, and we will be one of the dispatch options for the town. Um, and that'll be really at the discretion dispatch, which isn't a departure from what happens now, right? You call in, they decide if the fire department or PD go out. Um, and the thing I would say about that is we have a really great relationship with dispatch. They've been a part of our implementation process since before I got here. Uh, Mike Curtin, who you all probably won't get to meet, he works very early and kind of is always up there, but is uh, just a consummate professional. So our relationship with the PD is kind of as a sister agency. Um, they don't have... They don't have oversight over us, but we do work collaboratively. And so um, if there was, you know, I think the kind of follow-up question, which I don't want to get ahead of you, Tyler, is what happens if we need the PD? What happens if we're somewhere and it gets dangerous? Um, we're we're on the same dispatch system, so we would be able to call for backup. Um, and we're, we're using the exact same dispatch folks. So did that answer your question? Yeah, uh, definitely. It's also... Uh, really encouraging to see that people are still using it even without it being integrated into dispatch yet. Uh, definitely, it seems like there's quite a bit of demand for it and evidently demand for it is a <laughs> UMass study space as well. Um, but I'm also interested in like whether uh, you're planning to be sending people out jointly with PD as well, because it seems like there's probably going to be a lot of ambiguous calls that yeah. um, might need expertise in both directions. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, often people will will say, are we going to co-respond with the PD? Because there is a clinician who goes along with them sometimes who comes out of their car. We we won't be coming out of police cars. We uh, knock on wood, we'll have our own vehicles soon, uh, but we're using some town vehicles right now. Um, there is the potential that we'll parallel respond. Uh, in looking at the work, and we're doing a lot of tabletop work, we actually think that's mostly going to be with the fire department, actually, because um, they currently take a, a lot of mental health calls that that may fall in our, our wheelhouse. Um, and, you know, we're working through kind of regularly who would take lead, depending on what situation and what does transitions look like. Uh, Pamela and Jennifer were at our last, so once a month we have a call type meeting. Um, and that's where all the PD, all the fire department, uh, all their leadership, uh, us, the town manager's office, DEI, sit down and kind of talk about what's the barrier to us taking types of calls and how do we surmount that. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, you know, I'll tell you guys the numbers. I have September numbers. Uh, we're still working through uh, our, our data guy went to Africa for a couple of weeks to see a relative. So we're catching up. Uh, but our first month, we had uh, 1800 engagements with people in the community. Um, largely driven by us participating in kind of every engagement we could. Um, and we did 270 service deliveries. Uh, and that wasn't the whole month. That was September 6th till the end of the month. Um, so those numbers, you know, my personal goal, and this may not actually be, is for us to do about 4,000 calls a year. Uh, that's kind of what the LEAP report called for. That 270 month would put us, you know, pretty good on target for that. Uh, especially considering September is a little bit of a slow month. So um, I would say calls have slowed down a little bit as we've kind of paused set points to get back into training. Um, and there's just, you know, part of this is you get into the work and you realize, oh, I didn't realize that was going to be a big thing. Now we have to pause. Um, today, we had a really lovely session with uh, Alan, the tree guy. I, I do not know his, I'm not remembering his last name right now. Uh, do you know it, Jennifer? Snow. Alan Snow came in. 
that we learned about the history of the Mary Maple. And, and if you were there at the memorial tonight, there were there were crest responders there. There will be crest responders there tomorrow. Um, we're doing trainings on doing traffic details. We're now working with DPW on how we can support those initiatives. If you voted in town on election day, you almost certainly ran into a crest responder. Uh, they were working as constables at, at just about every election site in town. So, you know, every time I think I got it, I, Tyler, my big thing would be, I, I tell people, ask me this Friday what I think Crest is, and I think I will have a really solid answer for you. And if you ask me next Friday, it could be a completely different answer. Because, um, you know, we're just kind of responding to the work. And the great part about Amherst is the people we work with are giving us really active feedback. Um, so we're finding that some things we tried, hey, it doesn't work. And some things, some things we never thought we'd do are, uh, we have... Uh, Vanessa and Brittany, who've been two of our big engagement folks, they've been doing a lot of events. Uh, we ended up having to buy a bunch of stuff to make slime because now we have families bringing their kids into the office during the day uh, just to kind of, you know, entertain them for a little bit. And we're glad to do that, too. You know, uh, my part of my vision for this is that we don't meet every single person in town through the worst day of their lives. Um, we don't want to a 911 call is a failure, right? Nobody wakes up and goes, the municipal government is gonna come solve my problems. So for us, you know, that's not the best place to meet anybody. You're not really gonna get to know who they are. So we're working really hard to meet people wherever they are, whenever they are. And, and to that point, you know, we've been invited in by various groups and stakeholders in town and, um, you know, received tough questions. Uh, I think there's still a lot of tough questions to ask. And I think as you all see that January rollout, I think there's more. The 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 thing I do just want to say, because uh, I, I said it to the CSSJC folks, and I think it's important for you all to hear, we are the slow approach, right? Force is how you move things along quickly, right? If I want you to move somewhere and I can't arrest you and I got to talk to you, that means I need to be willing to put in more time into that engagement. So our average engagement is about an hour right now. We've had calls last as long as the entire day. We've done eight hour calls uh, where we've taken people to to meet some of their needs and um, so I think I just want to kind of keep expectations reasonable. Uh, I don't think what you're going to see is us kind of showing up and everything changing really quickly. But I do think our way is the slow way, but the, the, I believe it's the right way. I'm willing to bet my whole career on it. Julianne, go ahead with your question. Um, I just want to say that I, I really appreciate the flexibility that Crest seems to give because a group and a department that can adapt and change and grow depending on the needs of the population is exactly, I think, what we're looking for. And it's really great that you're doing this. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a feature. I think part of us being small right now means we have really unique skill sets. And, um, and that, you know, it's important. It's, it's such a diverse town. Um, and, you know, I, I learn more and more every day. Oh, I think South Amherst is like, okay, everybody in South Amherst uh, is kind of one archetype. And then you dig in and it's like, okay, this street is different than this street and their needs. And, you know, I think part of what we're really focused on is not just over-serving the folks who have been historically kind of over-served by public safety. So we're not kind of sitting in the apartment complexes waiting for things to go bad. We're we're going wherever we think people are and, and meeting them where they are and 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 really trying to hold clear to our values. And uh, one of the things I'm excited is I think you're going to see a mission statement go up on the town website that I think lines up with what folks have asked us to be uh, trauma informed, uh, anti-racist. Um, but, you know, that being unarmed doesn't mean we're we're cowardly or untrained or unprepared. We're excited. We're enthusiastic. Uh, we have yet to run into a situation we didn't feel like we could bring something to. Um, and, you know, and, and also, you know, sometimes somebody doesn't want to meet with us today, but we'll be here tomorrow and we'll give it another go. And, uh, so, you know, that's the other piece is sometimes it takes us a few times to really build trust with people. Um, and, and we want that we, we, you know, one of the things I said when I first got into town that I still believe is I'm not going to ask anybody to trust me. Um, I, I want people to watch our work and if it's trustworthy, trust us. And if it's not, then you shouldn't, um, but the work will speak for itself and it, and it has. This, I, I don't mean to be giving you no, a sales definitely. pitch. This is my baby, so I, I think no. about it a lot. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that. And I just, I do want to share something. I don't want to get into much of the semantics of it, but I think your team and you in particular do such a wonderful job being at the Amherst Survival Center. I know that we had an incident there where it did 
involve police involvement. Um, Tyler and so police came and responded first, and then um, Crest came and re responded after. And it was a racially charged type of um, incident. And so Crest just being there to be able to talk to the individual after the whole thing, I think, really helped out that individual's day. And you didn't get to see Earl, but that individual stayed and stuck around and was really just, it was almost like something was good at the center for that person to want to stick around because I thought that person would just immediately leave after that interaction. So I really do appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that so much. And, and that's, you know, that was a great opportunity to have a conversation with someone about something that was really difficult, right? Um, it's hard to exist in the world. Anybody have any other questions for Earl while we still have them? So if I'll just give you guys some timetables, if you want to think about having me back sometime, um, we will have a report um, that I'll be able to deliver to all the groups that are interested, probably middle of March, we're looking to get that going. Um, and then we are obligated to have one of those a year after our first deployment. So next September, there will be the kind of formal, uh, we're, we're partnering with a, an outside evaluator. Um, and, and the numbers will tell the story, good, bad, or indifferent. And I'm really excited to have such kind of thoughtful committees to, to really help the town to make those decisions. Is this worth con continuing? And, uh, you know, I, I can tell you, I believe it will be, but the numbers will will tell their story. And so um, I'm always glad to talk with you. I think your work is some of the most important in town. I think human rights are are so so easily forgotten. So I'm always glad to come back. And if there's ever an issue or anything, folks can always get a hold of me. I, I always want to be responsive to everyone in town. Yeah. And I'm going to get out of here. Have a great rest of the night. All right. Thank you, Earl. Good night, Earl. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda, we have DEI update. Oh, yeah. go ahead, Jen. Just real quick, because I know Ben has a hard stop at 730, and I'm trying okay. to get times for e the two events that are coming up sh shortly while everybody's here in a group. So um, yep. on December 10th, we have Human Rights Day. And so typically in the past, we've had like a little candle visual where the 2022 proclamation will be read. And then as a group, the Human Rights Commission has read the deck and the community has come in and read the Declaration of Human Rights and usually have like some hot cocoa and, and some snacks and stuff like that. So um, December 10th is a Saturday. So I wanted to check in with the group to see about timing, what time would be good to have that event. I picked 430, but perhaps that doesn't work for everyone. So unfortunately, I have an engagement that day. So I've already explained to Jennifer that I won't be there, but it's really a nice little event. Um, so if you can make it make it there, please do. I can I can tentatively say yes. But I'm also tentatively saying yes without having a, a basketball schedule in front of me. So, so I'll, okay. I'll know in two weeks whether I'm, I'm a firm yes. But if I am free that day, I will be free all day to accommodate whatever works best for anybody else. Okay. Um, is 4.30 a good time for folks? That includes you, Tyler, and La um, Kelly, um, Laverne. So it's, does 4.30 on a Saturday seem doable for everyone? Yeah, that works for me. I think that works. Oh, we we can can't you, hear you, Laverne. No, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> um, that time works for me. Oh, great, thanks. Tyler? Yeah, I think that time should work for me as well. Okay, Ben, uh, Philip? Yeah, that works for me. Pamela? Okay. So the other one really quickly, so I um, I want Ben to be able to hear the DEI report. So, but real quick is Kwanzaa celebration. So Liz and I have been kind of working on that and uh, we don't have to go into all the details now. I can go into some of those later, but we have to come up with the time. So the first day of Kwanzaa, which is unity, which will be the day that we um, kind of used to, to celebrate is December 26th. And so we are looking at um, maybe a four hour 
maybe plus event. So I was trying to look for times from folks. Um, you know, I, I think we're going to be able to have some food there. So um, we could do like 11 to three or 11 to four or I, I don't know what works for folks. It's the day after Christmas. So it's is it in person. Yeah. Well, you it's said in yes. person. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I will be out of town that day. So I will not. And so Ben, it'll be great if you can um, be there. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, uh, like my family's coming here. So I don't, whatever time works best for most folks for me just because of that like the earlier the better but okay yeah, i think 11 to 3 sounds good i don't know if anyone else has objections to that 11 to 3 works for me as well yeah i don't think i'll be able to come oh no i'm not entirely sure yet but okay is it timing or you're just not around that day? I'm not sure if I'll be around. Okay. And uh, Tyler, are you on, are you around? Um, which day is it? It's December 26. Uh, no, I'm gonna be traveling. Okay. And Laverne? Um, I'll be traveling that day. Well, not that day, but I will be out of town. So. Okay. So we'll have as many folks as we can. Um, so that's good though. And 11 to three seems to work fine. Okay. Perfect, thank you so much. That was it. Thank you. Okay, so I'll start with the um, DEI um, updates and I'm, I'm sure Tyler and Laverne, you are familiar with DEI, but I just since this is your first meeting and we do tend to use a lot of um, sort of shorthands, I will just say DEI is diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, the town created uh, a new department last year and uh, Jen is the assistant director, I'm the director. We were both, Jen and I, sworn in on July 5th when um, the CRESS responders were, so, were sworn in. And CRESS is Community Responders for Equity, uh, Safety, and Social Justice. Hopefully I got that. I got it. Um, Jen's shaking her head, so. Safety and service. Safety and service, okay. Um, so that's the CRESS acronym. Uh, so th the DEI department is Jen and myself. We're just a department of two. Um, and to give you a, a little bit of, uh, of oversight, we really divide our work into three broad categories. So we're tasked with working internally with all of the departments, uh, staff, uh, boards and committees. So that we are the staff li liaison to three um, boards. So the Human Rights Commission, the African and Heritage Reparations Assembly, and the CSJ, CSSJC, which I won't even attempt because I'm tired. <laughs> um, and then there, are, in addition to those three, there are another 44 different boards um, in the town. And so our job really has both an internal fo uh, focus, working with you know, everyone who's involved with the operation and support of town services. We have an external focus, so we, um, um, hope to partner with both the colleges and the university in the area, as well as nonprofits um, and other business entities in town. Um, and then the third part of our job, the, the part that I think we both are really interested in and have passionate about, but is really difficult is uh, the town has decided that it would put efforts into becoming a more diverse, welcoming and inclusive community and addressing um, racial healing or racial reconciliation. And that's really the, the hard part about the job. It's where I think 
our passion lies, but it's definitely the most difficult aspect of the job. So that's just a little bit of an overview of the department and, um, and what our role is in, uh, in town. So for updates, uh, Jen and I have completed a, a department self-assessment tool where each department will review on a number of different um, categories uh, related to diversity, equity, inclusion. So there's a, a, a chart where they're asked to provide uh, demographic information about not only their staff, but also the constituents or clients that they serve, as well as consultants or volunteers that they interact with. And then following that demographic chart, there are 15 questions on a variety of um, issues related to DEI. So a thorough assessment tool might ask, you know, five times the amount of questions that we're asking, but we really, I wanted to get started. I wanted it to be a soft start, um, but one that was sort of comprehensive. So hopefully we will have a sort of a broad brush picture of how each of the departments are doing around um, uh, different issues on DEI. That assessment tool um, has, we've completed it. It's with the town manager for review and upon his approval, then we will send it out to the departments to start gathering that information. Um, we've also completed our uh, strategic uh, plan. It has not been provided to the town manager yet. We have a colleague in the office who's reviewing it for um, edits and for suggestions, but that will go to the town manager shortly. Uh, we met with the Director of Workforce Equity and Inclusion at Amherst College um, last week and um, have um, exchanged some information with them. That department is interested in providing some DEI workshops or trainings for the town. So we're really looking forward to um, what I think will be a great partnership between Amherst College and the town around some of the workshop, professional devel development workshops that we hope to, to give. Um, Jen and I met on Monday night with the um, Racial Equity Task Force of the League of Women Voters. Um, much like this meeting, they wanted to check in with us, see what we are doing, um, see where our priorities are, um, asked where they might be helpful in um, supporting us both in collaborating about different programs that we might offer, as well as offering support for an expansion of our budget at the town council meeting. Um, we both attended the South, sea, South Asian Festival. Um, I have served on the hiring committee for, or currently serving on the hiring committee for the Comptroller's Office, and Jen is serving on two other hiring committees, one for libraries, and Jen, you'll have to remind me what the second one is. Oh, oh planning department for master plan, or a planner. Okay. Um, Jen and I both attended the Roger Wallace Excellent in Teaching um, dinner, um, and that was a really wonderful event. We got to meet more members of the community, or I got to meet more members of the community. Jen knows everybody. And then um, uh, learn more just about the school system and the award. Um, I had a meeting with the Disability Access Advisory Committee and they're very interested in having this office support them and wanted to make sure that um, I was well versed in um, uh, the American Disabilities Act and the um, 504 regs um, and that we as a department saw disability um, access and accessibility as part of our charge, which we do. Um, uh, Jen and I have also done and uh, participated in a number of different uh, training events. Um, uh, the Mass Municipal Association uh, had a webinar on conflict um, in municipalities and managing conflict, um, which um, we both attended. And then the Massachusetts Office on Disability had a two-day training on at 
on monitoring access. So um, basically all the technical uh, uh, parts of the ADA, like, you know, which way a door opens, what percentage of incline there needs to be, where, um, um, you know, uh, uh, toilet fixtures need to be placed. I mean, just all of the technical um, aspects. It was, it was very informative and very uh, jam-packed two days from like 9.30 to 2.30. Um, but, you know, it's the type of information that is, is really necessary for us to know. Um, in addition to that, I uh, attended a Northeast Government Executive Council webinar on municipal financing, which was really quite, um, quite informative and great because uh, we are entering the time of year where Jen and I will need to put together our budget and think about what we might need for um, support from the town going forward. Um, uh, I also participated in an anti-hate training which focused on support for the trans community. And uh, the last thing that I guess I'll mention is that we will have an interview on the 22nd to fill the last slot for the HRC, so um, this commission would be um, complete with as far as membership concerned. On our to-do list, um, Jen and I have um, made a commitment that we will calendar events for both the Human Rights Commission and the work that we want to do on um, racial reconciliation that we'll, we'll we're going to try to get an idea of what the number of events might look like and try to sketch out some dates. I think it'll be basically like not specific dates, but like the second week or the third week in one month, and then just try to plan all of that information out. Um, and then we're working on a list of possible partners um, and uh, for that, for those events. So we know that um, that we will have a partner through the League of Women Voters. We know that we'll have a partner through um, Amherst College, through the Workforce Development um, Office. And then there are, are possibly other partners um, in the community. We'll be reaching out to a lot of different um, organizations uh, in the community. So that's what I have. Jen, it, it, is there anything I left out? I just ran up the stairs. Sorry. Was so, um, no, I I think you, from what I'm aware of, you got everything. Thank you for that report, and I think that this is a great opportunity for the Human Rights Commission to also extend that offer. That as the League of Women Voters, is there anything that you? would like from us, would like to see us support or anything that your department can benefit from the Human Rights Commission? Yeah, so with the next, um, with the funding request, the, I mean, we of course love lots of money because we could think of a million different ways to spend it, but the, um, the financial requests that I've placed at the top of the list and um, that I've spoken with Sean Mangano, the finance director about, is um, a finances to support an external consultant to um, work with the town on the creation of the resident oversight board. Um, and I, you know, I, I am very hopeful. I feel optimistic that the money will be allocated for that purpose. Um, I think that the town councilors are, are in support, but that's, that's certainly the, num the number one financial ask. The, the, it, the other financial issue that we really have to try to resolve, and I think this is going to take a little bit more creativity, is that you know um, the town um, is somewhat restricted in how it spends its money on different events, and generally, you know, celebrations call for food, and that's a hard thing for us to to um, to do. So we we I think I think we need to really think more creatively about 
a permanent solution for that um, and just how we are going to both balance the responsibilities of doing the, the cultural events um, with the other events that I hope are, will be really focused on um, education and, and information. I think there's an, you know, celebrations are great, but I, as I shared with the HRC um, at your retreat, there is this philosophy that you need to move sort of beyond just holidays and heroes into little things that are more substantive. So it's just us uh, finding the balance between those two activities. And they can, you know, they can occur simultaneously. They don't have to be one or the other, but that's something that I think that, that we're gonna be striving to work on and, and we'll have um, good discussions about as we put together this calendar of events for, for the rest of the year. No, that makes sense. And I know that um, the HRC in particular does do some celebrations, a lot of celebrations with that. Um, I will offer my volunteering if you would take that on. If you want any help with that, I can offer some time to that. Um, but yeah, other than that, I was going to say something else uh, for our new members. Oh, yes, for our new members. Um, the DI, correct me if I'm wrong, Pamela, the DI department also filters through any complaints filed by the public um, about human rights offenses that want to be in, in investigated. Right. If you could go into detail with that, that'd be sure. great. So um, prior to the creation of the DEI department, I mean, the Human Rights Commission has is longstanding. The town has had one for many, many, many years. And under the prior bylaws, the um, town council, or I guess it would have been city uh, town selectman or the town manager would appoint a human rights director. And in the past, that person has generally been the human resource director for the, for the town. Once this department was created, then those responsibilities have shifted to our department. So in my role as director of the, of the department, I serve also as director to receive um, human rights complaints that would come into the commission. So a person or, um, would make a complaint to the commission and then, and then I, as the liaison to the commission, would investigate. Um, I, you know, I've only been in town now for about four months, um, and um, we've only had one complaint in the in the four months. I think, um, in general, there's fewer than six a year. And Jen, please correct me. I'm sure it really var varies, but um, there does not seem, at least currently, to be a lot of activity. Part of that might be that people don't know that they can make a complaint. When folks are aware that they have an avenue to complain, then you generally see more complaints coming in. Thank you for that recap on that. I just thought it was important just to highlight that for new members. Sure. Sure. Uh, anybody have any other questions for DI report? All right, seems like a no. All right, then uh, next on the agenda item is the CSSJC, which is the Community and Safety Social Justice Committee, which I am a member of update um, of the July 5th incident. Uh, I'm trying to recall where we were at last time around. I've, I've done <laughs> a lot of work on that. Um, so the CSSJC had a meeting, a joint meeting with the town council on November 1st or 2nd, I believe. I forget which one. Uh, it went into the various hours of the night. I don't remember how long, but somewhere around 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the morning is where we ended. And they're kind of at a standstill with the motion. And the next meeting was this past Monday on 11 
14th of the town council with that motion to the incident of July 5th um, in town. And I guess, are you both aware with July 5th? I'm sorry for our new members, Taylor and Laverne now. Just a quick little brief blurb here. I'll just give really quick. Um, July 5th, youth were in a complex waiting for their car to be fixed um, by AAA and police were called on a noise complaint that escalated into more of, I don't know what you want to call it, but it escalated because a police officer had said to the kids that um, they had no rights and the officer, um, his partner clarified that there's been various reports um, from the police department um, on the incident, as well as other community member um, outreach into that. So that's a very vague and brief, quick little one, but there's more information about it if you Google it or just look into any of our previous meetings and packets, but that's kind of what I'm talking about. So uh, then on Monday, the town council passed a motion, which I believe Jen shared with everybody, or was that just CSSJC? Jen? You know, I did send it out, but I didn't send it to Tyler and um, Laverne. So I will send those to you guys in a few minutes, um, or right now, actually. I can just forward it to you guys right now. That's great. Thank you, Jen. Uh, the importance of it, um, there's various, I think there's seven items on it. Uh, the importance in particular to this group is that the town manager will be writing a report, and I'll just read the language here that the town manager will report on actions to be taken or and or progress in addressing the above no later than four months from the date this is voted on so no later than four months of uh, monday which was the 14th draft reports to be available to the town council the cssjc and human mission as when, no less than two weeks prior to town council meeting where the items will be discussed that the CSSJC and the HRC provide written advance advice to the town council five days prior to the town council meeting at which the items will be discussed. When that report comes out from um, our town manager, Paul Balkelman, there'll be advice that this committee can give as well as the CSSJC committee can give on that issue. Um, I think that is kind of where we're at with that aspect of it. Um, the other stuff that CSSJC is doing is um, looking into, there was a request that came in from, a, I don't remember if it was a just resident about um, the new school and they're having discussions tomorrow as Penn mentioned there at their meeting, as well as with the turf um, as to whether or not um, security cameras should be put into the new school and kind of what's the benefit, what's the reason why. So that's more just of a questioning that I think the CSSJC is doing as to like, what is the reason for putting them? Cause that is being proposed and I believe being voted on, but I'm not sure about tomorrow, but it's at least being discussed tomorrow at the school committee. And Jen or Pamela, if I am missing anything, I feel like I'm doing a pretty botched report right now. So forgive me for that if I'm missing anything. No, I, I think that the, the update on the town council meeting, the passing of the motion, the letter around, um, around video support, surveillance at the new school um, and then um, uh, a request for financial information about uh, consultants who've worked with the police department. And the other um, uh, issue was, uh, I think they're gonna return to a discussion of reviewing the finances for um, business in town that received ARPA funds. 
And I think those, those are the major issues that they've discussed at the last couple of meetings. Thank you for that. Uh, do we have any questions in regards to that or any comments? I know that was a lot of information thrown out at once. Anybody? I'm not seeing anybody. Okay, so like I said, and as far as that motion goes, once um, Paul sends over that report, this body will give its advice as to whatever that report um, entails and kind of what we think of the overall killing process of the town around this incident can be done. And again, it is just the advice that the town council will hear from this body. If that is it then on that, then I am going to move to the next item, which is the UMass PD Hampshire College incident in Yale incident. Um, UMass PD incident. Jen, you're gonna have to help me out with that one. I don't know why I'm blank in here. Oh, so, so there, oh, go ahead, Perry. No, that's right, go ahead. <laughs> there was an incident on the UMass campus where it seems a student was, well, what I'll say is uh, their chancellor sent out an, an email to all the students because there was an incident where a gentleman who was of color um, was arrested on campus um, and they had received several complaints because I believe what it sounds like is the people really felt like it was not warranted. So I believe that the police officer was um, kind of patrolling an area that was under construction and so that there shouldn't have been any traffic there, whether it was on foot or by vehicle. And from what I understand, the student walked through it or by it or somehow and the police officer you know asked him must have asked him not to be there and asked him what his name was and so forth and it just escalated from there um and uh it ended up in an arrest so let's see i can pull up the the letter and share it on screen. Can you all see the letter on screen? Yes. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Jen, and for pulling this up. If you could uh, send that to us as well. I, I know I have it somewhere, but just for other members, that'd be great. Yep, it's all part of that complete packet, and I've sent that off to Tyler and Laverne Perfect. already. Perfect. Thank you, then. Yep. Are you guys all set with the screen share? or? Are I think so. Still it, is, it is in the packet, so if you, if you all just pull up your packet on that, too, do can have that. The other incident. Um, I can sh share that one too. Is, yes, please. Was on Hampshire College and that one is in regards to, uh, seems like a misprofiling on the police's end to um, hold someone. Was that person arrested or was that? that person was not arrested. So I don't know all of the background to that, but I do know from what I understood was that 
the person was misprofiled and there were dogs involved. So there was two dogs, I believe, um, in the a same area where the person that the police were actually looking for. So Hampshire College does not have a police department. They have a campus safety. Um, and I'm not quite sure their correct name that they use for them. So, but they, um, oh, CSW, Campus Safety and Wellbeing. And so Campus Safety and Wellbeing called the police department and in re regards to a person who was, uh, had concerning behavior. So from what I understood too, that they were threatening others um, in a very violent manner with, with threatening with weapons and making hand gestures that was con of concern. And so they, UMass police came, I mean, Amherst College police came with the two dogs trying to search for the person. And then uh, they found this other individual somewhere in the same vicinity. And the, the person that they were originally supposed to be looking for was found in Hadley. I don't really have a good idea of the, the time, like right. if it happened simultaneously or not, but, um, and so Hampshire College was, a very upset and the student was very upset and other students were very upset naturally right and that the full um articles in the um, package as well if members can take a look at that and then i will just add in that there was another incident brought up to my attention of um oh pamela do you want to speak on hampshire college before i go yeah i i, I think it's important for um for folks to know that the Hampshire College um, Campus Safety and Wellbeing called the Amherst, it was, it's actually our police department, not Amherst College, our police department, because the person that they um, had previously identified in one of their buildings was the subject of a be on the lookout notice from the Northampton Police Department. Um, and the person had actually, I, I believe, left uh, an ID in the library. As the Amherst Police Department was searching on Hampshire's campus for this person for whom uh, there was this be on the lookout um, notice, they encountered the student. The student was, um, was handcuffed while they determined the idea, but determined the student's identification. Um, but the, and the individual um, who was the subject of the be on the lookout notice was found some, sometime later, it was, was not simultaneously, like, you know, it was probably a few hours later uh, in Hadley. And the, I guess the, the um, the geography is such as that you can walk from Hampshire College through the woods and trails. Um, so that is why they were searching that area. Right. The, um, the person who was the subject of that be on the lookout notice or the allegations of that notice were that the individual was threatening harm to others, harm to law enforcement. So it was a quite serious, um, you know, allegation, which is why I think they responded in the way that they did. Great. Thank you for that. And then what I was just gonna bring up, and I guess this is more of a question about logistics is that uh, I've been made aware and also been reached out to by some people um, in regard to a UMass incident that pertains to a bus, which is PV, I forget our bus transit. Um, but basically, a um, Black woman was asked to dispose of an open container drink and did so. And then it seemed as if there was some perceived bias on the bus driver to have her removed from the bus after that. And then UMass police was involved. And so I guess the logistics question that I have is that someone on the bus is reaching out to me to file 
a complaint with the HRC. I told them that I would get back to them as to whether or not that's something in our purview. Jen? I mean, we can't really tell anyone not to file. Right, so yeah. Typically what we try, try to do is if we can't, if it's not in our purview, we try to get them the resources so that they can be linked. But there's an application on the HR website page. So if you go to the human rights page and they complete the form, then it'll come to us. Okay, I will direct them that way then. Or they can always feel free to come to the office and we can. I will help them out in that way then. I think that, that this whole topic and conversation pertains to the motion that the town has passed. And so I think this is where kind of where out as a town and at as an advisory committee to the town is that police and public opinion of each other or just opinions in general go in various different ways, yet we all coexist in the same space. And so how do we make that a reality to actually coexist in the same space? And so I think that it is good that we're doing this kind of update on reporting of the past previous months and also with the um, town council passing their motion. And so I think that these next couple of months from the, for, um, the HRC as an advisory committee can be pretty crucial in this part to give advice to town council, to the DI director, um, our department, and just hopefully moving our town into a more healing type of environment is what I will say to that. Um, and then we have Yale and that is, I, Victor, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but is there any update on um, Franklin? Is, am I getting that right? Um, not to my um, knowledge, I haven't gotten any updates. Um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any updates. Um, it could just be that the family is dealing with it on their own. Um, as I was made aware that a bunch of the actual investigation was not public knowledge. Um, so um, I feel like even if I didn't know some things, uh, I don't want to like say anything that the family right. doesn't want me to say. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know anything new. Could we give our two new members? a background in regards to the Yale incident, please? Yeah, um, so basically, um, I'm forgetting the actual date, but uh, last month, um, a native Amherst resident that doesn't live here currently, but he lives in New Haven. Um, he was out late with his girlfriend. They were just enjoying a night out where um, a group of supposed Yale students um, attacked them just as they were passing by on the sidewalks um first it was verbal accusations about um some things that the that franklin's girlfriend did and then it was um some cussing and some slurs that were passed around and then when um franklin supposedly got defensive the kids jumped him um fairly bad he had a broken jaw um, he had to get the surgery on his nose. Um, it was a bunch of stuff that actually um, required him to call the ambulance. But um, luckily uh, for some witnesses that were nearby, um, one of them was actually a trained EMT. So he jumped on the scene, he uh, helped Franklin. And then from there, they brought him to the emergency room. And so far, at least um, when I last talked to everyone, uh, they couldn't find this group of people. They just had um, faces, but they couldn't actually contact them or find them. Uh, so I hope, I really do hope that maybe they have some more information, but what has come to me hasn't really changed um, so far. And I hope I'm not missing anything else. Unless anyone remembers anything else. You're good. No. All right. Uh, does anybody have any questions with those various updates? I know that was all a lot of 
update on that one? Um, I think for the UMass one, uh, I'm rather concerned, or specifically the UMass one about the UMPD um, arresting a student, I'm rather concerned by since I don't know how UM. PD generally operates, but I know Amherst College Police Department usually interfaces a lot with the town of Amherst Police Department, and some of their work ends up leading over to the town more broadly. So I don't really see UMPD's uh, action just being contained to the UMass um, campus. And it's worrying that it seems to suggest this incident specifically that they might have escalation problems from a little concerned as to whether that's like a pattern of um, escalatory behaviors by UMPD, which is, I think, especially bad in a college environment where um, a lot of the people they'll be working with are more impulsive more generally, um, or if this is something that's more isolated. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I mean, this is kind of the first that I'm hearing anything from. UMass PD as well with the bus incident um, that I just gave. Go ahead, Pamela. Um, so I, I, I can't answer your question specifically, but I can say that um, the UMass Police Department, and I believe um, Amherst, Amherst Smith in Hampshire College used to be in a, um, have a memorandum of understanding where the, they uh, contracted for police services together. Um, and so there was one police force that covered all three campuses. I think it was um, Smith, Amherst, um, and Hampshire, or maybe, I don't know. Anyway, the um, police departments on college campuses can receive permission from the state to operate as um, special police uh, departments with the ability to carry weapons and to make arrests. And, um, and so I, I do believe that the UMass Police Department actually has those special uh, powers um, so that they would have, so in, in essence, they function in the same way like a police department would function in a town and municipality. They have the same powers. It, and it really varies a little bit from campus to campus. Some campus police officers don't have those types of powers and don't carry weapons. Um, some do have special police um, powers and do carry weapons and can make have arrest um, powers. And it, it um, as I said, it just varies a little bit from 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 campus to to, to campus. But it's my understanding that the UMass Police Department would have arrest um, powers the same as if they were a police department in a municipality. So it's almost as if the campus is a town um, unto itself. Generally, in those types of cases uh, where officers make arrest on um, campuses, they would do like a, um, a municipality would do and refer cases to the district attorney for for prosecution. Um, but the other part of the question as far as like, I don't know the history of how that police department has, um, has functioned in the past. And I don't actually know whether Amherst Police Department, whether Amherst College Police Department um, is, uh, has special police powers or um, carries what carry weapons. I, I do know that the Smith College Police Department, which was in partnership with a couple of the other colleges, did have um, police powers and could make arrests on campus. I believe UMass PD does carry um, weapons. I think I have seen that. Uh, I think a point of clarity for me, and it just might be my unknot knowledge of how that works um is jurisdiction wise does that fall under so like the university would fall under um UMass PD but does Amherst PD have any jurisdiction on campus even though it's in town so I mean that's a good question generally um in the in the 
in my experience where colleges have ha have held had where colleges or universities have police departments who have arrest um, authority, they limit their authority to the confines of the campus itself. But I I don't know you know I don't know uh, the specific answer to that question. Most um, of the institutions where I've worked, where they've uh, the police have had arresting powers on campus, they've worked, you know, they work really hand in hand with um, with the local police departments. So, for example, at North Shore Community College, where I worked, we had three campuses: um, Lynn, Massachusetts, Danvers, and Beverly. All um, police department, the college's police department actually had authority on each of those facilities, the different locations, um, and they had special arrest powers, but they collaborated with um, the police departments in each of the municipalities where we had those facilities. Um, they worked um, often with Lynn. I, I don't know if you guys know Lynn, Massachusetts, but you know, it's, um, it's an, a larger uh, city, urban city. Um, and the campus itself was right in the heart of downtown. So if, um, if someone was fleeing from a downtown town arrest or whatever, they were likely to run through our campus. So they worked, the, the campus police worked hand in hand with the police from the municipality in Lynn. And I would suspect that that is true um, he, here as well. So if an Amherst, uh, an Amherst, a town of Amherst police, let's just a scenario, I, and um, a town of Amherst police is pursuing someone um, through the town and the person gets to UMass campus, um, they're not gonna stop, right? right. They're, they're gonna continue <laughs> to pursue them. They're not gonna say, oh, wow. You made it on the campus. It's not ours. So I'm sure they work very, very closely hand in hand. Um, and so I, I, I'm sure the the um, the town police department um, would pursue uh, a person if they were on um, if they were on campus. And I'm sure if they would notify the the campus police that they were pursuing a suspect of, and I'm sure that works in reverse as well. So right. that they work quite closely. Okay. Together. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. And Tyler, to your point and question, um, I, like I was saying, I, I don't know the history of them, but I will say that something that I will, I guess, applaud UMass PD on doing is um, having an outside investigation happening in regards to that incident. So they've hired on councils non-related to the school and police department to kind of look at what happened in that way. So I think that that was a good move on their part. Anybody else have any other questions? No. All right, then we already did E and F um, on the agenda. Upcoming events is uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day celebration. Um, do we know if the, I know I've never actually attended the church event, but I know that that is our pancake breakfast event, Jen. No. Do you want to take that one, Jen, or do you want me to take it? Or we can, <laughs> Clever. We can, piggyback, we can piggyback on each other because Jen and I have both been involved with uh, some follow through on that. Yeah. So the um, Martin Luther King Breakfast Committee, that it's, I think that they're trying to have an event. Um, I don't know that it is going to be in the same manner that it has been in the past, which they've always do a fantastic job on their events. Um, so uh, I have, so I'm, I'm trying to reach out to Heather Holla, Sister Heather Holla Lord. So she is, um, I think the president, right, Liz, of the 
She oh. is the president. Richmond has stepped out as president. He's staying on the committee as far as the um, scholarship committee is concerned. But Heather is the president and Marisha Joyner is vice president. Vice president. Yeah. So um, last time I spoke with Heather, she said that, you know, maybe we could do something in collaboration. And I really didn't like I really want the breakfast committee to say kind of separate from the town because it's a grassroots thing that's just been going on for so long. And I always honor them when we have our event here. I don't like, I'm not trying to replace their events. You know, their event is fantastic. Um, hence the town still has an obligation. So uh, as far as our event, so I'll start with the proclamation. Sister Hala has the proclamation, so she will be the community sponsor that is going to uh, submit the proclamation to the town council uh, through the Human Rights Commission. So um, she will be doing that. And then for the event of the day, haven't quite gotten there yet. I need to wait until after Thanksgiving. If folks have ideas of what they want to do for an event, that would be great. So pre-COVID, one year we um, always have a bell ringing ceremony that rings 15 days. We usually celebrate, have our celebration on the 15th and the breakfast committee usually does their event the weekend before the holiday. The Saturday before the holiday, I think, Liz, right? Correct. So if they were to pull something off, which is a big if right now, it would be January 14th. Right. And so we tend to celebrate. I like we've been doing it on the 15th. So one year we had uh, we had it in the evening. So we we had a bell ringing ceremony and the council read the proclamation. And then we had a, a candlelight vigil walk through downtown. Um, and the, to the back of the Woodbury room at the Jones Library, where we watched some footage, and then we read a, one of his speeches. It was like a community reading, so that the community was involved. And uh, I think last year it was online. We did the same thing, but we included the kids from the high from the middle school. I think were involved in that one. So. Um, each year they just kind of keep changing so if folks have ideas that's great and uh, I'd like involving the youth as well Liz sure <laughs> I'm not around that weekend actually but you know me whatever you need up until Friday morning I'll help you do um, as far as the town breakfast committee um, I know that they're not going to have a breakfast so for those who don't know, Pamela and Tyler, um, the town- uh, And Laverne. Uh, Laverne knows all about, cut girl, please. I, I know she knows. I know, Stop but it. come on. But she knows. <laughs> she can probably tell you more than me. <laughs> um, the Wesley United and Goodwin Memorial um, have been in partnership with this breakfast for, good Lord, I was on the committee in the 90s, so I don't know how long. Um, and they used to have a breakfast. And um, after the breakfast, people would adjourn to the auditorium and there would be a program. So I know that this year, um, they're not gonna do a breakfast, but they're still thinking about doing a program in the auditorium of the middle school. So we don't know what that looks like yet and if they're gonna be able to pull it off, but um, hopefully we'll be able to get some answers on that front soon. And then we can then always go forward with ours as well, so. Yeah. Questions, concerns, comments? Pamela has our hand up. So um, the there is a national day of racial um, healing that is sponsored by the Kellogg Foundation, which um, occurs the day after the Martin Luther King holiday. And um, I have suggested that the, the town participate in that. The, um, the Kellogg Foundation actually produces um, 
uh, materials for engaging in conversation around racial reconciliation. So it's a pretty easy lift to just adopt the materials that they have um, and to you know schedule some time and places and um, someone to facilitate. So hopefully that will be something that we might pursue this year as well. And that would hopefully be our kickoff, right, Pamela, for, um, right. as you know, racial healing can happen in one at right. one event. I wish it could, but it cannot. So um, we it'll be our kickoff. That'll be great. Those both events sound good. And yeah, just uh, I'm sure during our December meeting, we'll discuss more about um, what's happening. And on that day, um, and anything we can do to help. Uh, next event is Black History Month and Lunar New Year Festival. Or do we know when New Lunar New Year Festival is? Next yep. So year? it starts on January twenty eighth, and it runs through the middle of February, I believe. Okay. It's about a month long, so it might run to right. the end of February, but it. Um, so Black History Month, we had one celebration in person and the other have been on Zoom and they've all been very well attended and fabulous. And we've included the uh, middle schoolers. The Lunar New Year and slash Spring Festival, that one's a little bit newer. And so we have celebrated it for the last two years with a minister from the First Baptist Church has joined us. And then last year, we also had um, one of the teachers who teaches uh, Chinese, her class came in and, and was involved. And so I'm really looking forward to being able to have that event in person, because I think we can do a lot more with that. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and if you don't know about the Spring Festival or Lunar New Year, you should they get like little red envelopes that have all kinds of like money and different stuff. So like a fabulous, uh, event and and history there so i um that's where we are we're a little bit far away but there's just things to start thinking about and if people know folks who would like to be involved with any of those events then that would be great and as i said the mlk proclamation is with sister hala and the black history month proclamation uh we don't have a sponsor yet, so either the Human Rights Commission can sponsor them, or if you know of a community member that would like to sponsor it, that would be great too. And the same with the Lunar New Year. So that for Laverne and Tyler, the the council, we create proclamations and then the, the counselors approve them. And so uh, then they read the proclamations, which is a lot of, um, so it's really nice because you're getting the buy-in from the, the town council as well, which is our legislative branch. So, um, yeah, I, that's, so I really right now my focus is on Human Rights Day, which is pretty simple, I think, but then we have everything we need for that. But then Kwanzaa's coming up on December 26th. And so Liz and I have been working on a program for Kwanzaa. I know that she reached out to Poku Victor Juliana um for oh Juliana said she won't be here sorry uh to see if, about their involvement so I'll be following through with them next week I told them that I would give them some time and then I'm going to come in and put my hand down and say no you're going to be there and this is what you're going to do okay yeah <laughs> yeah and so we're for Kwanzaa we're inviting a lot of the um elders in the community. So it's going to be a very nice uh, event, hopefully, over at the bank center. I did get one person who said that they would definitely participate. Um, I know that you spoke to a few people. The young person who I talked about catering is going to be gone. For okay. Family. So he's not going to be able to do that. So we'll be able to, you and I can talk further about what to do about food, food or no food, or some food, mm -hmm. or what kind of food. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jen, would it be helpful then for the um, upcoming events, I guess, for 
commissioners to think about where they want to plug in and what they would like to be a part of and possibly in next meeting have kind of an answer as to yeah, that would be great yeah because i think both those events have been good and i will say um to add into the lunar new year um and spring festival celebration that i think the past couple of years have been very informative and teaching wise from different um various members of the community so i really do like that aspect of it and that if we could keep that that'd be great because i think a lot of people go into it not knowing what it's about yeah it's a fantastic celebration and it's the, it, full of uh, history and culture so um yeah. and i just I w i'm so happy to do it in person because it just changes the possibilities of how we can continue on with that event so mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. Philip, i have a question for you and it you may not even know the answer to this but in the past a uh aagc emissary gospel choir mm -hmm. we you all have put together a black history month luncheon it's usually the tuesday of the week the kids are out of vac on vacation so that would be the 21st of february and the Amherst area gospel choir came and we sang freedom songs and did some other songs and got the community involved while they're luncheon and i know that it that stopped during COVID, and i'm not sure where you're at with that so are we I'm talking not, we're talking uh the center right yeah yes. 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 he right. doesn't <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry you gotta you gotta put me in where i'm oh, having wait, a wait. conversation you know the place that you actually were yes. You <laughs> yes uh yeah you and i can connect because i just had a conversation about that and i think that that would be happening this year if we can make it happen so if you all are willing to do it and very preliminary talks well i have to talk to you'd have to call jackie wallace right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah well We'll definitely see what we can make happen. But yes, it is on our radar at the center. That was just a sidebar, sorry. Yep, yes, <laughs> all right. I guess all I right. should add with Black History Month at the beginning, I know everybody wants to go. So we, um, at the beginning of Black History Month on the 1st, we have a flag raising ceremony that Miss Judy Brooks, um, who is a, who was a well-respected member of our the black community I mean, she rest in peace um she really I, I believe she created the event itself the flag raising ceremony and so we start black history month off with the flag raising ceremony and then in the middle of the month try to follow up with another event and then or something or towards the end of the month so it ends up being like two separate ones although okay. i guess i need to find out when the first of february is February 1st is on a Wednesday. Okay, yeah. So we'll make them two separate events. Yeah, and if you're thinking about something else, just be aware that the kids are out of school from the 20th to the 24th. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank you for that. And then uh, right before we close, just um, if you had said last meeting that you were going to um, write up a little blurb or something for Facebook, for November, if you could still get that into Jen, if there's any loose ends that need to be tied up there. And then as well as we just need to go through December really quick and assign for our two new members. It's just um, a couple sentences on the various days um, that happen in the month that we post in our Facebook just to acknowledge um, human rights related issues. So for December 1st, we have World AIDS Day. Would anybody like to take that on? So did, did, didn't did we go all the way through December last time? Did we? I just remember Juliana, but I remember Juliana saying that she'd already given me something for- That was November, right, Juliana? African, the abolitionist, the- uh, I, I didn't do abolitionist, but I know I did- um, the national day of i think the international day of peace um yep. there was a human rights day um i'm not entirely sure but i know i sent at least two total emails to jen somewhere and they should be somewhere now yep no i've posted yours and so i've already posted the one that was for there's one tomorrow, it's International Students Day. So that's been posted on our Human Rights Facebook page. And if you are still on Facebook or if you're on Facebook, please go on and uh, follow us. 
Yes. We, <laughs> are you not on Facebook anymore? <laughs> Facebook, I don't know what that is. <laughs> you you call me old, Victor? Victor, are you calling me <laughs> What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Tell your parents. <laughs> yes. So did we then go through December? Does anybody else? Uh, did I, I don't know. That? Let's, it's getting late, and so this committee, you know, so um, yeah. we can always, I can always send it out in an email. That works for me. And then people That's can perfect. respond individually. Uh, and right. so, yeah. Then I will move to adjourn this meeting and time at 8.19. All right. Thank you, everybody. Welcome, for Tyler coming. and Laverne. Welcome. It's a pleasure. Yeah. It's nice to see you, Laverne. <laughs> All right. Bye, Everybody. guys. Bye, bye. Bye, everybody. Be safe out there. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes.